Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com. If you have a photo that you are unsure how to edit or you would just like to see what I would do with it, please send me an email and I would be happy to incorporate it into my free videos. If you need a more targeted, comprehensive approach to Lightroom, and trust me, you do, <laughs> please check out my online Lightroom workshop available via my membership site. We learn Lightroom in its entirety and develop an efficient workflow. Most students have reported the ability to significantly improve their photographs while cutting their editing time in half. And the bottom line here is better photos in less time. Okay, so in the previous video, we edited the photo on the left, and today we will adjust the photo on the right. And what a difference a week makes in Western Pennsylvania. The photo on the left had colorful leaves, sun, beautiful blue sky, and the photo on the right, oh, well, it was taken exactly one week later. It was cold, gray, dreary, not to mention the absence of leaves, but that is no problem. <laughs> I know that we can significantly improve this photo with a few quick techniques. Okay, let's jump over to the develop module by pressing D on my keyboard. And I'm going to make sure that just that photo is selected. Now in Lightroom 5, we were introduced to the radial filter tool. It's very similar to the graduated filter tool, but with a circular or radial approach. And there is a clue here. The keyboard shortcut is shift M for the radial filter tool and the keyboard shortcut for the graduated filter tool is just M. So that's a clue. They're very similar, but let's start by making a few quick adjustments to this photo. Let's go ahead and pull down on the exposure just a little bit and warm up the overall photo. So mostly I am looking at them in the photo and that looks pretty good. Okay, let's access our radial filter tool. Remember we just said it, it's shift M on the keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna double click this clarity back to zero as well as the sharpness. So I'm just gonna draw the tool with no adjustments so we can analyze a few things that happen. Okay, so when you click and drag out, this is what you get. You can make it obviously as tall or as wide as you'd like. You end up with these pins around this node that you can then move and position into place. You can pull up but you'll notice it's pulling down at the same time. Do you see that it's going off of the canvas, which is okay. The change is just going to be affected on the outer edge. And just for the record, you can invert that mask and make the change just on them. We will probably explore that in a future video. So I can maneuver this. I, I'd like to refer to this almost as like a quasi selection. It is like a selection because it's targeting certain areas of the photograph. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it there for now, and I can always tweak it as I make adjustments. I'm going to pull down on the exposure quite a bit so we can really see what's happening. So in this case, I'm sort of vignetting the photo or burning it in, but I'm using the radial filter to do so. I should mention that as with Photoshop, there are many ways to accomplish the same task. My goal is always to find the best, most efficient method. So there are other ways to do this, but I always want to stick with the most efficient. Okay, so I can move this down and then it comes in and I can drag it down here. Okay, but something really neat that not a lot of people know about is that if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, and remember, I've said this in the past, that modifier key always brings life to the party. You can just adjust part of that radial selection. <laughs> I was looking for the right words. Do you see that? So if I let go of alt or option, it does it all at the same rate. But if I hold down alt or option, then I can just grab one particular area and pull it in or out. So I can sort of change this shape to be a little more organic. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get it right where I want it. And I like the way that's looking. Okay, so I pulled down the exposure to just kind of um, give that a little bit of life, but I am also going to increase the temperature quite significantly. So you can see what's happening to the background and the outer edges. I'm gonna go ahead and just for now, I'm gonna press Shift M to drop this tool. I wanna show you using the backslash key. Remember, that's the key that leans to the left above your enter or return key looking at the before and the after. 
Okay, so there are a few things I'm noticing. One is I see the halo. Do you see that halo effect to the right of, this is Maria, to the right of Maria. I can see it right here. That's going to be a problem for me. And I used my 70 to 200 for this photo. Oh, let's go ahead and look at those settings. So I was at 4.0 to make sure everyone was in focus. ISO 800, 250th of a second. Okay, pretty good. But um, you know what I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and press shift M to bring that radial tool back and I'm going to click on this node or pin to make sure it is selected and I am actually going to take the sharpness down a little bit and what I'm doing is sort of blurring the edges a little bit more. If I take the sharpness up, you can see those leaves getting very defined and if I take it down, then they get a little softer. Here's what I will never do. Ever, never, probably never. <laughs> I would never pull down on the clarity in this particular instance, it ruins everything. So I've seen people doing this um, with the clarity, pulling it down too far, and it just does not look natural. Remember, we want all of our adjustments to be subtle yet significant. Maybe I would pull down on it a little bit. Oh my goodness, but never, never much more than this. Okay, so I like the way that's going, but maybe I want to adjust this selection just a little bit. And I'm still noticing somewhat of a halo around them. I like the idea of this tool because of the feather. Um, and right now it's at 50. So let's go ahead and increase that. Now you'll notice what happened is that change sort of came in on them. And if you pull back on that feather, you'll see. Oh, and here's a really good example of, let me go ahead and hide that by pressing H. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> I don't think that that, something tells me that that's not in style. Okay, I'm gonna press H again so I can see my tool and I am going to pull up on the feather. But what happens with the feather is it comes in on the photo, or, I mean, not on the photo, on them. So I'm gonna open it up just a little more. And what that did was help to get rid of that halo effect without me having to do much else to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift M to drop this tool and look at my overall before and after. And wow, what a difference that made. And just for the record, like I mentioned earlier, there are a couple different ways to accomplish this. You could use the adjustment brush, but I think it would take you much longer. This tool is really handy and really efficient. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.